in how to learn photography faster by trying things out for yourself part one that's a mouthful isn't it we looked at the mental approach what stops us trying things out why are we lazy partly because we're just human beings that's what we do we're lazy so I thought it'd be a good idea to come out here to the sort of place you might go for a day out you know it's busy there's stuff going on we've got some lobster pots kicking about it's where I run my beginners workshop actually and I thought we'd just try some stuff out for ourselves. I'm going to address those same questions that we looked at in part one. We're going to go and we're going to try them out for real. And hopefully you're going to forge some new neural pathways up here in your head. You're going to exercise your brilliant brain, which is my first building block of photography. Because if you don't think like a photographer, you haven't got a chance in hell of ever becoming one. Well, I don't know, do I? Because I don't know what it is that you want to achieve, and this is why it's important to try it. Let's have a look at these railings, shall we? I quite like the way the light's coming around them. They're sort of backlit, and I think that could make quite an interesting shot with loads of depth, because it's going all the way up here. We've got a nice, long, long, deep shot, and as you can see, there's a building site. You can hear it. There's a car parked over there. All that kind of stuff. Do you want that in your shot or not? What aperture do you want to use? Let's give it a go. So let's get down here and try it out. I'm going to look along these railings. Let's see if we can get my video camera rocking and rolling. Oh, look at that. Marvellous. So look, as you can see, that's the kind of shot that I'm thinking. I'm trying different angles and compositions because I like the way we got one a bit sharp in the foreground. So that, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to go that way. So I quite like that. Let's kill it. You can see what I'm thinking. That's with a wide aperture, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, exactly. You know your apertures. So if I shoot it at f4, which is a nice wide aperture, then I would say that this shot works brilliantly like that. Let's take it to f9, shall we? Let's take it again. Focus in the same place and see what happens. Let's tilt it that way. Cool. Take it all the way out to f16 and see what happens. Focus it and hold it at the angle. Look, as we flick through the pictures, you can just see the difference between them. Well, which one's the right aperture? I don't know. What effect do you want? Aperture affects it here. But just around here, we've got a little poppy. It's growing out of the ground down there. What aperture do you want for that? Well, what happened did you want? How much depth of field are you going to need? Ask yourself a question. You're going to need, think on it, think on it, tell me the answer while I'm just getting my camera set up. You're going to need very little depth of field, aren't you? Because you're only photographing that. We've only got that distance. So let's just have a look. Let's get that focused. Spin the video. Look, so that's the some kind of shot that I'm thinking of doing, something like that. There's very little depth of field going on. So, kill the video, focus on the plant. Let's take this round to F4. Take a shot. Now let's spin it round to F9. Take the shot. Now let's just spin it round to F16 and take the shot. Look at them. How much difference is there in each of those? I don't know which apps you want to do because I don't know what it is you're trying to achieve. You've got to try it. Well, I don't really know because I don't have your camcorder. What you can do is try it and see. Polarizing filter out of my camera bag. I use it on my Fuji. So let's just pop it over the lens. And you see that big patch of blue up there in the sky? What's it doing? Can we see a bit of a difference going on? I think we can. So in that case, yes, you can see that as I rotate the polarizing filter on my Sony camcorder, yes, you can. You're going to have to try it on your own. That shouldn't be too hard to find out about, really, should it? Let's take a picture on a sunny white balance and see what happens. We've got the headland and all that kind of cool stuff and a little bit of that rather bright sky. Then what we've got to do is change the white balance, isn't it? 
So we put it onto a cloudy one. And take the same picture. Sunny, cloudy. That's a much difference. I don't know because I don't know what it is that you're going to go out shooting. So you've got to choose for yourself. I mean, do you want your seascape type shot to look something like, say, that at 10 millimeters, or maybe something like that at 24 millimeters? Or possibly, more like that lucky seagull at 50 millimeters. Or what about 100 millimeters? Or even 200 millimeters? It's your call. What do you want it to look like? I don't know which is the best lens for you to take out when you go shooting because I don't know what it is you're going to shoot, so what you can do is take your lenses, try and see. Let's try it and see. So, let's see if I can get a portrait of a camera woman. Just, you just got to line yourself up, move around a bit. Doesn't matter what the lens is. Christina! Come on, Christina, try and look human. Yes, you can. Well, what aperture are you using? What ISO are you using? How much light have you got to play with? All those things are going to give you the best shutter speed to use, and I don't know what they are for where you are at that moment. They're changing every few seconds this afternoon here. Do you want to freeze movement? Or do you want a blur movement? If I want a blur movement here, and I can't really do it because there's too much light and I couldn't blur movement unless I put a filter on, I'm going to need a slow shutter speed if I want to create movement blur. So let's create some. What are we going to do? We're going to use a little tiny aperture to get rid of light so I can make my shutter speed as slow as possible. I think, yeah, here we go, I can get a fifteenth of a second. Focus and zoom and shoot. There we go. So I've induced movement. I need a slow shutter speed for that. In that case, a fifteenth of a second. If I want to freeze movement because these plants are moving a little bit in the breeze, what am I going to need to do? A faster shutter speed. What is the best shutter speed? I don't know, because I don't know where you are. I don't know what light you're in or what you're doing. So there we go, a nice little picture of some flowers, and they're not moving in the breeze. You've got to give up wanting certainty before you take action. You've got to try things for yourself so you experience things. It's all very well me telling you something, but are you ever going to remember it later on when you're out in the bush and the elephant's flapping its ears? Of course you're not. You've got to go and learn for yourself, so it's like driving the car. The first time you drove your car and the instructor said, put it in gear, and you looked at the gear lever, and the instructor said, don't look at the gear lever. You think, well, how on earth can I put it in gear if I can't see the gear lever? That's what photography's like. You've got to try it and see. So, oh, I don't believe it. I don't know which is the best. Sorry, start again. Shit, I've forgotten where I was holding the filter. The sort of place where there's obviously pictures kicking about, there's some, you know, lobster pots and bits and pieces. I'm afraid it's your call, you just gotta try it. How bad was that scream? <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos, or for more great photo tips, workshops, and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.